Delsing spent 25 years on the PGA Tour and is a lifetime member of the PGA Tour and PGA of America. Now he provides his unique perspective as a golfer and network broadcaster. It's time to go on the range with Jay Delsing. On the range is brought to you by Vehicle Assurance. Hey, good morning. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay Perley. What are you looking at me like that for? Deja vu all over again. Here we are. Ready to talk golf. Yeah, well, so we formatted the show like a round of golf, and the opening segment is called the On the Range segment. It's brought to you by Vehicle Assurance. If you need coverage for your car, they've got it for you. Any sort of coverage you need, call them at 866-341-9255. Pearl, we had such a good week last week leaving off our social media outlets. Let's do it again, baby. No social media outlets because we don't care. But we do want to care. They are and, popping, though. And we do think we, they are. We do thank Bob and Kathy Donahue at Donahue uh, Painting and Refinishing. Um, if you need any sort of refreshing for your home inside or outside, call Bob and Kathy at 314-805-2132. All right, Pearl. We got an interview with John Wood today. John Such a Wood, fun interview. Yeah, John Wood has been a caddy on the PGA Tour for 20 years for Kutcher, for Calc, for uh, uh, what has he done? Eight Ryder Cups, I think, or so. Just, just a really fun, interesting, interesting guy. I wish we could hear the unedited stories of Kelk. Yeah, because that, that guy is a character I've of all characters. Yep. I've got a few, but um, um, yeah. So um, we're gonna. Um, I wanted to tell a, a couple of our own personal caddy stories. Okay, how about the time that I flew to Detroit and caddy for you in the U.S. Amateur? Do you remember that? No, I don't. Yeah, we stayed with the uh, we stayed on Lower Long Lake up in Detroit, and uh, I don't. Where did we play though? Why do I not remember this? You said uh, this earlier. Yeah. Um, oh man, what was the name of the golf course? Oh, was, I now I it? do remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the name of the golf course, but I I couldn't get get it in play off the tee. No, you couldn't. <laughs> You do remember, no, that. I I do remember, remember that. I do remember that, too. I remember having a lot of uh, stickers in my shoes oh, at the end God. of the you day. You had such a great attitude. Twice you caddied for me, if you happen to remember. The other time was up in uh, central Illinois, up at uh, U of I yep. area. And I think I had the same issue. No, there, there I actually drove it well and yep. couldn't hit the green. Right. We didn't hit a lot of greens <laughs> and, out there. And for 36 holes, you toted that thing with a great attitude. Yep. And yep. that had to be hard because that 25-pound bag had to weigh one and a quarter yeah, easy. It wasn't. It, it wasn't. It was fun to see. You know, look, when you compete out there, look, there's nothing that you did that I haven't done 15 <laughs> times over again. But, but, John, there's this one story I'll, I'll never forget. When when we worked, when we'd caddy at Norwood, we used, I used to love taking the caddy shortcuts, duh, right? So I'd go, oh, here's your driver, here's your putter. You know, they walk down to the green, they putt out, walk to the next tee that's really close at Norwood. And so I'd get up on the hill and Pearl, I would look for balls. You know, when I'm in the woods looking for their balls and I'd find balls and put them in my pocket. And then when they go down there, I'd hit balls. I'd be firing balls off to where I could. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah, it was so that much fun. I'm like, I've all... were, you chewing, uh, were you eating m ms at the same time, too? Oh, uh, I don't think. I don't know. I probably. Think probably. I probably had them in my pocket. They were probably <laughs> melted or something. But the one thing that was so much fun was, you know, the, um, one guy said to me, hey, I thought I heard a bunch of balls hitting the woods over there. I'm like, I don't know how. <laughs> And, but Pearl, I hit him in a spot where I knew I could go find him again. You know what I mean? So as soon as I got finished with the... So you're using the, your, your client's clubs. All make, which was so cool because they all had great equipment. I had my mom's clubs and stuff at the time. I was like, oh my gosh, I wanted Jay. to hit their driver, but I had given them their driver. It was on the tee. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it was um, it was fun. Um, I can remember a time when um, we were caddying and some guy hit into us, our group. And it was a long hit, right? And the... And the guy that I was caddying for, I'll never forget, his name was John Gammons. He said, he was pissed. I said, so-and-so, I can't believe he hit into us. And I said, do you want me to hit it back at him? And he goes, can you hit it that far? I go, oh, yeah. And he goes, go ahead. So I teed it up and hit it backwards. I'm like, what? <laughs> Member said I could do it, but the, how, how much trouble could I get in? Uh, but th- th- those that, are fond memories for you. That was a that was a huge piece of your uh, tr- of your golf life. Tremendous, uh, tremendous. The fact that the people that introduced me, Pearl, the the, the class of 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 I don't want to say better people, but just it, it was an up 
uptick for me from the way that but I But there was a lot of good people, but weren't they just, just to the core? Absolutely. I, I just don't want to um, think that it was, you know, that it was, any, anyway, it, it was fun. It was, it was an absolutely great experience for me. And we've had these experiences on, on tour and we've had these funny experiences. And I thought, man, with John Wood, you know, we should go ahead and honor him with a couple of our, our own kind yeah, of stories. Absolutely. absolutely. You know what, Pearl, um, this is a long John Wood interview, so that's going to wrap up the uh, the front nine. But don't go anywhere. We'll come back with the front nine and our interview with John Wood. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hello, yeah. friends. This is Jim Nance, and you are listening to Golf with my friend Jay Delsing. Wilson Pools Plus has been beautifying homes in the metro St. Louis area for over 30 years. They're a family-owned, full-service pool company. Whether you want to add a pool, landscaping, patios, or just have them service your existing pools, Wilson Pools Plus can handle any job. You can reach them at 314-421-1301, or if you're calling from the east side, 618-632-2386. You can also check them out on the web at wilsonpoolsplus.com. Marcon Appliance Parts Company needs to recognize their own for reaching the highest level of excellence achievable. Southeast Region General Manager Terry Jones is a 25-year employee of Marcone and a most respected veteran of the appliance service industry. His team of 30 makes sure that consumers from Charlotte to Tallahassee to Key West get the genuine parts they need to keep their major appliances humming using incredible next-day service. Terry turned down the understudy, lead role as Crocodile Dundee, opting instead for the honest life of making sure original factory parts are there when you need them. Well played, Terry and Southeast team. Thanks for your tremendous effort and dedication. It's great to be on your team. Marcon Appliance Parts Company is based in St. Louis, Missouri, and is the largest distributor of major appliance parts in North America and proud distributor of General Electric Parts. Many of us have friends or have personally experienced knee replacement. I recently have gone through this procedure. My friends at SSM Health Physical Therapy have literally got me back on my feet. I could not be happier with the one-on-one care that I received. Being treated with the latest techniques and the experienced staff, I feel like my old self again. Let my friends at SSM Health Physical Therapy get you out of pain and back to your life. There's 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. Grab your clubs. We're headed to the front nine on Golf with Jay Delsing. The front nine is brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. And welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. Pearly is with me, and Brad Barnes. Meet is taking great care of us here at the ESPN Studios. And we're on the front nine brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. Um, well, you know what, fans? Might get tired of hearing me say it, Pearl, but I'm just so excited about this thing. The weather's starting to get good. We can get out and start practicing in September. Uh, Norwood Hills and the Champions Tour in St. Louis is going to be the center of the golf world. Man, there's not another uh, PGA Tour event that week. Really? I didn't opposite. know that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really going to be special. And it's two weeks before the Ryder Cup. Wow. Yep. The big buildup. Yep. Absolutely. So that's going to be great. Um, so thanks for the Ascension, folks, for the support on the show. I'm going to do the tip of the cap segment now. And it's brought to you by Dean, team of Kirkwood, 314-966-0303. And the tip of the cap goes to Carol Fromuth. Carol is the head golf coach over at St. Joseph's Academy. She has been a longtime uh, golf coach there. She won another state championship this last year. I can't even count how many state championships she's won, but here's what I'm telling you. When I played junior golf here, she was running it. And her son, Mike, and I played against each other, and he's a pro now playing the game. Her daughter, Susan, is a great girl and has been donate, dedicated her life to the game and is teaching and stuff. And so just a uh, 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 a thank you to her for growing the game and everything you've done. Carol, keep up the good work. Keep winning championships. And um, my buddy Colin Burnt um, is your man over at the Dean Team of Kirkwood. He brought to you the tip of the cap segment. And uh, Pearly. I want to shout out to uh, Brandy and Colin over at the Dean Team. They took care of me. Appreciate it very much. And Jay, is that place humming? Oh, yeah. 
They are making deals. They are making things happen. Yep, There's a yep. boatload going out there, but I'll tell you what, it was smooth. It yeah. was smooth. Yeah, Brandy's there to help. She's a great girl, and they do, you know, the, any kind of car you want. Yes. It's not only Volkswagen. I think you bought a big truck or yep. something. And yep. Yeah, fantastic. So, uh, okay, enough of this. we got to go to this John Wood interview. He's uh, been a caddy on the PGA Tour for 20 years and multiple Ryder Cups and President's Cups. Enjoy this interview. Is it his time? There it is. Can you believe it? I am sitting down this morning with my buddy, John Wood. John, how you doing, man? Jay, I'm doing great. How are you? Thanks for having me on, first of all. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I, um, I'm so glad that we were able to finally connect. I mean, 19 years as a caddy, but just you're such an interesting human being and such a good human being. You have so many cool um, interests and uh, things to say. So let's just kind of jump in. But I know you started playing golf at an early age. Take us through your early life with golf. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I kind of fluked into it, to be honest with you. I, uh, you know, I I loved baseball. Baseball was my true love as a kid. And, um, you know, in between my freshman and sophomore years in high school, that's all I'd played pretty much uh, up to that point. And then um, I was out hitting some balls, taking a lesson from somebody at the local Muni. And um, the person who was taking the lesson behind me had some connections at a, um, at a local private school, a uh, Catholic school that had a really good golf program. And, and uh, they asked the teacher after I had left if, if I'd be interested in going there and, and playing golf for them. And, and uh, I had never even thought of it because it was literally something I, I didn't play very much, but I got fairly good fairly quickly and um, ended up going to, to Jesuit high school and playing golf there for three years. And uh, that's how I got started. So it was kind of a fluke thing. I just kind of fell into it. It wasn't a plan or, or it wasn't something I played forever. Um, I just started playing around 13, 14 years old and, and um, I figured at, at being uh, slow and about five, seven, uh, I had no real baseball career, so uh, maybe I'd try golf, and, and, and uh, it's worked out okay. Yeah, I'll say. So So then you went on to Cal Berkeley. That's not an easy uh, joint to get into there, John. I did. I, like, I, like I tell everybody, I had a cup of coffee at Cal Berkeley. I, I was there for only a year. I played golf for them and, and uh, had a good time. Uh, but it was just, it, it was, I had other stuff going on at the time and it just wasn't for me at the time. I know I wish I could go back and, and have finished out, but, uh, you know, life works out how it's supposed to. So, um, but yeah, I did, I did enjoy it there for a year. And then I think you began on the PGA tour working for Kevin Sutherland in 1997. You're exactly right. Yeah. Um, I'd known Kevin and his brother David for a long time and their coach, Don Bauckham. And um, it was Kevin's second year on tour, and he did never really settled on a caddy his first year. Um, so we were just out hitting balls one day, and, and he and his coach Don asked if I'd be interested in coming out and trying it. And uh, gosh, I'd never even thought about it. So um, I never, you know, I, I asked Kevin. I said, "Can you can you guarantee me a full year?" Because I don't want to get two weeks in and get fired and having left my other job. And, <laughs> Man, you uh, already knew the gig before you even started, John. <laughs> So Kevin was on, I mean, what a great, I mean, you know, Kevin, such a good guy, so uh, patient. And um, he was great because I, you know, you can think, you know, golf and you can play in some pretty good amateur tournaments, but when you get out there on the PGA tour, it is on such another level. And there's so much you have to learn to be a good caddy out there. And Kevin was extremely patient and, and um, in, in letting me take my time and learn things and, and talk to other guys and watch other guys caddy and how they did it. Um, so it, it, I couldn't have had a better person to, to start out with because he was just, he was so patient with me and it was great. Uh, he's a terrific person. So, so John, how long in that first year, or was it even in the first year before you said, oh man, I really dig this and I gotta, I, I've got to set some goals. You know, it, um, uh, I liked it right away. I didn't really know what I was doing uh, in hindsight. Um, but I think we got to, uh, I can't remember the dates at this point because the schedule has changed so much. But, um, you know, we had a decent West Coast, and then we got into a little bit of a slow patch. And then um, 
in Houston at old the Woodlands. Um, we got into a playoff with Phil Blackmar, lost the playoff, but that was when I really said, "Wow, this might this might really be for me." Um, in a, not just a, a year or two thing, which I originally thought maybe I'll do it for a year or two and then get back to the real world. But once I got a taste of being in the hunt on a Sunday and getting into a playoff and and everything that went with it, um, I just loved it, you know. And if you know, growing up playing sports, you love the competition, you love being in the heat. And if you can't be a player, you know, this was the next best thing because you're there, you're part of it. And, uh, you know, once we got, once I got a taste of that contention on Sunday, I thought this is something I want to do for a long time. Hey, John, you mentioned something earlier. We have so much to cover here, but I wanted to, to touch on this because I think people will be interested. What would you say is one of the two main things that jumped out about you at how good tour players are? Because you're a good player. You've seen good golf, but tour stuff is a completely different level completely different it's the detail it's so um it's so forward thinking it's so detailed you know there's um growing up you know this is before range finders or anything i think you'd probably be the same era where you kind of you glanced at the 150 stake and kind of go okay i know i got about this and i'll hit it um but you get out on tour and it's you know front edge 138 downhill four yards wind is left to right maybe a couple yards of help um, I hit my nine iron 143. I can get it up to 148, and and that's every single shot. And you've got to be on and forward thinking, and knowing that when Kevin's playing well, he will hit a nine iron 143. That's it. I mean, it's not like it's 145 or 141. You guys get that good, and uh, the level of detail and um, knowing where the misses are, learning the the, the courses out there my gosh it was just a um, a lot to take in the first year but um, it, the level of detail is what people don't realize and I I think Bryson takes you through some of that now when he's on the air but um, you know everybody out there is doing the same thing maybe just you know not using the as big a words but every single caddy and player out there on every shot every putt the level of detail they go into to come up with the right play just just blew me away yeah, it, 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 it's really, you know, everybody's mind's different, isn't it, John? Some people, you know, you'll get a guy like Fred, who Fred Couples, who will say, yeah, you know, I could hit three clubs that distance, <laughs> you know, yep. you know, and that's yeah, just absolutely. the way they play. And, and um, you get other guys that go, no, this goes 107 yards. It's going to take, a, um, a, you know, a two-step bounce forward and come back to, you know, 106 and a half. 100%. I mean, it's, it's that detail. 100%. It's funny. I talked to, uh, I was talking to Ted and Bubba and uh, we were playing a practice round somewhere and Ted gave him a number for a wedge and Bubba goes, I don't really listen to his wedge numbers. I just kind of hit what I see it and I see, I, I feel what it's going to be and I hit it. I, you know, he says a number, but I don't really listen. I cracked up at that one. Oh, John, we had Ted Scott on and it was, and T, as you know, Ted is another terrific human being and a really the good, best. good person and a, and uh, yep. uh, he's very uh, he's a very astute guy like you when he's out there taking in everything, every bit of information. And when you play caddy for Bubba, I mean, there's computers that can't take in all the stuff that Bubba's computing. I <laughs> uh, know. It's amazing. Uh, there's, there's times you're playing with Bubba and you're going, where is he aiming? <laughs> I know. Yeah, like, Bubba what knows. line is he taking? I, I can remember – uh, work in the U.S. Open, and I was on the ground with Bubba's group at Oakmont, and we're on number eight. There's 313 yard par three, and I see him pull out his driver, and I'm down the fairway uh, as the uh, on the player's right side. So you, I know Bubba's going to peel off a big slice, and I'm thinking everybody over here better get down because yeah. it's going to start off low, Incredible. and he's going to hit that little riser, and he just shrimped one right over our heads and put it right on the green, you know, 313 yards away. He's fun to watch. Yeah, he really is. So, so John, you you work for Chris Riley. You work for Calc, who's one of my favorites. Hunter Mayon for nine years. That was your longest stint with Hunter, and a very successful nine years at that. It was. We we had a lot of success together. Um, I was working for Calc at the time when I wor- hooked up with Hunter. Actually, we we played together in Milwaukee, and and this was Hunter's second year on tour, and he was really struggling and. You know, I watched him play that day, and I go, how is this guy struggling? Because he striped every shot he hit. 
Um, and I happened to mention to the ping rep at the time, uh, Matt Rollins, if, if Hunter was ever available, you know, let me know. Cause I think, I think we'd be really good together. And, and Hunter ended up actually losing his card that year. And um, I went to, took him, went to tour school with him and we got through tour school. And, and that was the start of a uh, prop, my most successful, you know, relationship on tour in terms of, of caddying and having a lot of success. I think Hunter and I went six or seven times together and, made a bunch of Ryder Cups and President's Cups and, um, you know, just made, I think we made the tour championship seven years in a row. And um, it was, uh, it was probably the, the the peak of my caddy career. And I've had a lot of great things happen with other players, but that stretch was probably my most successful. And we, we had a great run together. Oh gosh, John, you got 10 wins, including Bridgestone Invitational at Firestone, the Phoenix Open, which is so much fun. And Barclays, and but the team events, I know those are special to you. Seven Ryder Cup teams and seven President's Cup teams. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, that those once I, um, my first one was with Calc in, in 2002. And Calc at the time had kind of a rotation of caddies. He didn't have one one guy. He'd pick up, you know, me on one week when Kevin wasn't playing and uh, Cubby when he wasn't working one week or or, or bones when he wasn't working. So he had this kind of rotation in a stable of guys. And we were out to dinner one night at, uh, in new Orleans and, and uh, Cal just very casually says to me, Oh, by the way, what are you in for the Ryder cup? And I, I just about choked on my food when he said it, because uh, that was my dream was to work one Ryder cup and um, to have been able to, you know, once you get a taste of that one and get in the team room um, and get in that, get out there, um, you know, with everybody pulling on the same rope once, you never want to miss one again because they are just the funnest things we ever get to do. You know, to be in those rooms and, and you know, talking over um, strategy with the best caddies and the best players in the world and, and uh, you know, being in the matches is great. But one of the, one of the funnest, most amazing things is, when you are in the middle of a match and let's say, uh, you know, Phil Mickelson or Tiger Woods, two of the greatest players of all times, so maybe sitting out that session, they are out there slapping you on the butt, you know, look, getting in your face, encouraging you. Um, and it, just to have, you know, growing up playing baseball, I love being on teams. I love that feeling. And um, nothing, nothing got me going like those teams. I, I, something I circled every year at the beginning of the year, where are we? What do we need to do to get on this team? Um, and, um, you know, when I'm 90 years old in a, in a retirement home, those team events will be the things I remember most for sure. And you probably won't stop talking about them, and I'll probably be the only guy that wants to listen to them if I'm still alive. But I said, <laughs> tell me that story again, please. <laughs> so Very true. You got to experience a couple winning teams, right? Uh, yeah, Two, uh, one in 08 on with Captain Azinger and one at Hazel team with uh, Davis. And I was working for uh, Hunter in 08 and Kucher in, in, uh, at Hazel team. And then, um, you know, seven of one seven been on the team for seven winning uh, President's Cups, which has been great. So uh, I wish we'd won more Ryder Cups, but, um, you know, I wouldn't trade even the bad experiences for anything because it's just, it's such an experience to be a part of those teams, even when they don't, you know, even when you end up on the losing end, um, they're still special. So um, I cannot, uh, if, if you've never been to uh, a Ryder cup and you're a sports fan, even if you're not a huge golf fan, put it on your bucket list because there's just, there's nothing like a Ryder cup. Oh, my gosh, I'll say I've been to several. John, take us into the caddy room a little bit. We've talked to some players and talked about the players' room where, you know, there's kind of a almost a natural hierarchy, isn't there, where certain when certain guys speak, you pay a little bit more attention. Tell us what that's like in the caddy room and, and, and what your experiences were like and what stands out for you. That's a, that's a great point. It's very similar. Um, you know, when I started making these teams and, and uh, you know, Bones and uh, Joe LaCava and Cubby, who had, you know, been there many, many times before, you always listen to them and, and, and um, you know, approach them with questions you had. Hey, I'm having an issue with this or, um, you know, not necessarily strategic stuff, but, um, you know, those weeks are just different. And um, to have those guys to bounce ideas off and, and um, you know, when I first started caddying, irrespective of the teams, um, 
you know, if, if I wasn't in the middle of deciding something for Kevin or getting a yardage, I always tried to eavesdrop on guys like, like Bones and Joe and Cubby, um, uh, um, Mike Hicks, um, other, Paul Tassori, because you, you just you learn a lot. And if you just go out there in a bubble and think, I, I know it all, you don't. And you're not going to be a very successful caddy because so many guys have different ideas and, um, you know, you, you pick them up and you steal them, you know, it, it's just, I love like being out with Joe or, or Bones, I keep saying those guys or Steve Williams, you know, um, you'd hear them, how they reacted to a, to a certain situation, how they spoke to their player and you, you, you filed it away and go, that was, that's perfect. That's the perfect thing to say in that situation. I need to file that away when I'm there. Um, so it's just very similar to those, you know, the, the, the really good caddies who've been there out for a long time do their homework who are very diligent um you gotta no matter how long you're out there you gotta learn from them um because it's their that's that's the only way to learn to be honest with you okay that's got to wrap up the front nine uh don't go anywhere we got more john wood coming up on the back nine this is golf with jay delsing hey everybody it's vince gill you're listening to golf with jay delsing i want to welcome vehicle assurance to the golf with jay delsing show Vehicle Assurance has been in business for over 10 years. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee, which is one of the reasons they have over 1 million satisfied customers. They are known for their painless claims process and their premium vehicle protection plan. If you have a car, they have the correct coverage for you. Find them at VehicleAssurance.com or call them at 866-341-9255 for a free quote. Get the protection and the peace of mind you deserve. You've seen it and played it in bars over the past 30 years, and now you can bring Golden Tea to your home. Complete your basement or man cave with the popular arcade game, The Ultimate Virtual Golfing Experience. Over 80 courses, unique game modes, and you can even challenge a buddy in online tournaments. However you play, you will be the talk of your neighborhood. Visit home.goldentea.com to learn more. Have you met your local farmer's insurance agent, Ed Fogelbach? He proudly serves families and businesses in the St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and the entire metropolitan area and is ready to review your existing policies to provide a no-obligation quote today. Call Ed Fogelbach at the Fogelbach Agency, 314-398-0101, or stop in today and get smarter about your insurance. Again, that's the Fogelbach Agency at 314-398-0101. Hey, it's Meat, and you've been spending a lot of time in your home. I get it. I have, too. That's what this pandemic has done to us. And with that time at home, if you've been thinking about upgrading your home, maybe a pool, Wilson Pools Plus, those are the people to call. Jay did it. He was recommended by Bernie Federko, and trust me, you will love it. Wilson Pools Plus, not only do they build pools, but they can also completely service the existing pool that you may have, or they can refurbish your deck and patio areas. They can install a new cover, a new heater, you name it, Wilson Pools Plus can handle it. You can reach them now, 314-421-1301, or on the Metro East, call 618-632-2386, or you can also find them online at wilsonpoolsplus.com. Hey, this is my buddy Joe Sheezer, and he's with USA Mortgage. Good morning, Jay. How you doing today? Great, Joe. Thanks Good. so much for the support. Uh, we really enjoy it. Thank you. We look forward to the show every Sunday morning. We love all the information and all the great tips, and we all sit around the uh, radio on in the morning. <laughs> I'd love to listen to your show. It's like the good old days, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I get the wife and the kids and the dog, and we wait for <laughs> Whack and Chase to come on. It's our favorite part of the show. Which one are you? Are you Whack or Chase? Oh, no, I'm Whack because whack? I'll hit it, and then because Pearlie's also a caddy, he's got to go chase it. Which he's, he's the chaser. He's, yeah, he's got the worst end of the stick there. <laughs> well, we really enjoy it, and thank you so much for having us on the show. Don't miss the hottest rookie class in PGA Tour Champions history. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club September 6th through the 12th. Join legends Jack Nicklaus, Tom Watson, and Hale Irwin to celebrate the PGA Tour Champions' newest event. Professional golf returning to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic presented by Emerson. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, pro-am foursomes on sale now. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com. I want to tell you about a strength training fitness program that helped me and that can help you. 
It's called 20 Minutes to Fitness. They have two locations, one in Clayton and one in Chesterfield. Every time you go to the gym with 20 Minutes to Fitness, you work with a professional trainer. They take you through specific machines and with specific exercises that are designed to help your golf game. We're talking about strength, flexibility, and those two components are huge to help you improve your game. Visit 20MinutesToFitness.com. Your first session is absolutely free. Get off the couch and get in shape. We're halfway there. It's time for the Back Nine on Golf with Jay Delsey. The Back Nine is brought to you by Fogelbach Agency with Farmers Insurance. Welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. i got Pearly sitting here with me, and we are headed to the Back Nine. That's brought to you by the Fogelbach Agency with Farmers. 314-398-0101 is their number. Any sort of insurance product you need, uh, health, life, whatever it is, Ed has got a couple of his kids working there at the agency. They're terrific people. I just called them a couple of weeks ago, so give them a shout. Uh, let's go right back to the second half of the John Wood interview. Well, here it comes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow! In your life have you seen anything like that? It's really true, and I've had Bones on the show, and we've had Joe and Paul Tesori, but what's interesting... You know, John, it's, it's, uh, let me rephrase this. What do you think the hardest yeah. thing about, about caddying on the tour is? Because you really have to pick your spots, don't you? Yeah, you've got to know your player. That's, uh, that's a huge thing, um, even more than getting the right yardages. And, and you've got to know your player's personality when, you know, it's almost like a, it's almost like a coach out there. You're the only guy that can talk to your player during a round. His coach can't, his psychologist can't, his trainer can't. You are it. So you've got to know, when does my player need a kick in the butt? When does he need to be lifted up? When do I need to just get him off of golf for a couple holes and talk about his kids and talk about basketball and talk about a, a book I'm reading or a movie he saw? Um, those are – you got to read your player and know because every player is different. You know, uh, there's some, some players I wouldn't say anything when things are going bad and other guys I would, I would get in their face a little bit. Um, other guys I would pump up and remind them how good they are. So it's a, it's a really, um, I think it's an art figuring out what your player needs at the time. And I think the best caddies can do it uh, very well. And a, a lot of, it's not something the public sees. You know, you, you get into a big situation coming down the stretch at a major and you're in contention and um, you can kind of feel your guy clamming up a little bit and maybe walking faster. And, and um, you know, it's nothing the public would ever know, but a good caddy in that situation would, would start walking slower and engaging in conversation, um, maybe not related to the golf, um, to get his mind off it for a minute. Because, you know, you can't concentrate for four and a half, five hours straight. It's impossible. So you got to pick those points to, to pull him off of golf. Um, and other times when you th- you look at him and you think he's got it right now, um, it's almost become it almost becomes like a pitcher throwing a perfect game. I'm not going to say a word. I'm going to give him a number and I'm going to get out of the way. Um, I said it on the air in one of my first events. I think the only the only thing a, a caddy can do to a 62 is turn it into a 67. <laughs> so you got to know when your player's got it, you know, and he's in that rhythm. Just don't overly involved don't feel like i got to be part of the show here you know get out of the way until he really needs it and asks you um so it's just it's a real study in, in knowing the personalities um and obviously i think the the easiest thing is learning how far your guys hit clubs and what shots they learned that they like to hit most but the personalities and what they need to hear i think is way more important you know john for for my generation there's so much more player caddy banter that goes on now over shots. I mean, when we mm-hmm. played, you know, and it was lousy ball, you know, it's a lot of ball and all the other nonsense <laughs> we played with. But there were, you know, I I never asked a caddy what shot uh, he thought I should hit. I, I don't think I've ever asked any caddy that before. But that really goes on nowadays, doesn't it? It does. It's changed so much, even from, from when I started to now. Um, 
And I, I'm not sure. I think there's a lot more information available to us. I think we probably spend a lot more time with our players than, than back in the day. Um, you know, we're there when they're taking lessons from their coach, so we know what they're working on. Um, we watch them hit every practice ball they hit, and we know when they're struggling with hitting the cut. And they know we know um, if – if he's hitting, you know, little shots better than big shots, you know, if, so if we get in between out there, is it little seven or big eight? And I know he's been struggling with little, little shots, you know, you've got to talk him into big eight. Um, but yeah, I'm not completely sure what, what the reason is, but um, I think, uh, I think it's changed in that guys now, instead of coming out on tour and getting a tour caddy who might know the courses, but not, might not know you at all. Um, that used to be the way it was done. Now guys are bringing out college teammates and guys they've played golf with a lot and brothers. And, um, and then just so they, they know the personality already, they know how to talk to you. They just got to learn the caddy part of it. So I think that's a, a big change that's happened in the last 20 years or so. You know, that, that, and that's a really, really fair point. I, I don't want to shortchange your bronze Olympic medal. I, 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 I can't believe, you know, the, the Olympics were last held in St. Louis in 1904 and you got to go down to Brazil. That had to be just a thrill to be at Rio on Cucha's bag down there. Oh, Jay, I, I cannot, it exceeded all my expectations by million miles. I was, you know, when I think, um, Jordan decided he wasn't going and, and, we were 15th in the world at the time, so we were the next on the list. And, and Cooch was right away going, no questions asked. And, you know, to be honest, a lot of people had pulled out. I was I was even wondering, is this a smart thing to do in the middle of the summer? Playoffs are coming up. Um, you know, we got a Ryder Cup coming up. Do we? Is this something? But Cooch was 100% in. And, and um, the second we landed and, and saw what it really was, I was so thankful that, that he had no doubts about going because – it was such a singular experience. It was so much bigger uh, than a golf tournament. You, you, you felt like I'm part of a, a huge team here with USA on my hat and USA on my chest. And, um, you know, we're just one small part of something that's so much bigger than ourselves. And, um, you know, you, you get caught up sometimes in just you and your player out there week in, week out. Uh, but when you get on an Olympic team and um, – you get those feelings. I'll tell you the funnest thing was that it was getting dark at like five o'clock, five thirty every day. So, you know, we were done with our practice rounds or our rounds by two or three. And that was when the excitement started. It's like, where are we going? We're going to basketball. We're going to tennis. Uh, we're going to ping pong. We're going to uh, badminton. It didn't matter. They were all the Olympics and uh, to be on that team. And then to have coach do, did what he do what he did on Sunday you know, we were warming up and, and we were just kind of casually chatting. I think we're in 10th or 12th. And I go, Cooch, you know what the great thing about today is? I said, fourth is the same as 65th. <laughs> so we can go for every pin. We can go for every shot because it's only, they're only paying out the top three here this week. And he kind of laughed. He goes, you're right. And uh, he just played flawlessly all day. And once we he made an eagle on 10, and that's when we really thought, okay, we got something here. Um and, uh, you know, we played a great back nine, actually let a couple go. But, um, you know, to, to know when we finished, we had a medal locked up was um, I'm, a, I'm a huge team guy. I, I've loved the Olympics forever. And uh, I, I, I cried a few times that afternoon after we after we you know secured it. Uh, so that was um, I, I hope everybody goes this time in Japan. I know a lot of guys were wary of it with the Zika virus and, and being the first time it's happened in so long. But. I'm hoping everybody goes this year because I think they heard from Henrik and from Justin and from Cooch how great the experience was. So um, it, uh, if you would have told me at the beginning of my career I would be in the Olympics at some time, I wouldn't have believed you, you know. And to have been there, to have gone through it, um, one of my fondest memories I'll ever have. This is uh, Golf with Jay Delsing, and I'm talking with my buddy, professional tour caddy, and now voice on NBC Golf coverage, John Wood. John, tell us a little bit. One of my, you've got a, an accomplish, uh, a, a tremendous amount of accomplishments um, all over the pages that I've prepped for, but one of my favorites, I've got three stars by this. Tell the folks about what happened in Hartford when you were caddying for Hunter, and he's going low, and 
he hits a shot, a second shot on 18, and you pulled David Finn out of the crowd. Uh, Tell us about this. This Talking about wanting to cry, this is an unbelievable story. Yeah. I got to know David. I uh, first met him in Hartford, actually. I, I think he and his dad were standing off the eighth key, and, and uh, I just – Hunter is taking a ball out of play, and I went over and handed it to him. And, um, you know, David has a um, – uh, a very severe uh, muscular issue. He can't really speak, um, and he's in a wheelchair all the time, but there is not a bigger golf fan in the world. He watches every second of every tournament. Um, he knows the players. He knows the caddies, and whenever the tournaments are in the Northeast, he um, he comes out, and everybody knows him, and everybody loves him to death. So um, that, that week um, – I talked to his dad and his mom a lot and, and, you know, I knew what we were kind of one of those positions where we're, we're first off, you know, we weren't playing very well, but um, I had talked to his dad the day before and, and his mom and said, Hey, on 18, um, just be right there by the fairway on the left side of the rope. Um, and, and if the situation works out, okay, you know, I was going to, you know, wheel David up the fairway and, and let him have that feeling. So, um, I talked to the rules officials about it, and I said, is this is this a problem? Is this uh, breaking any rules? They said, no, absolutely. If you want to do it, go ahead. And, um, who knew Hunter was going to shoot 61 that day and just go off? So, um, you know, we moved up from about 60th to about, you know, 10th at the time. And um, he had a beautiful shot in there, second shot. And I saw David and his parents over on the side and uh, walked over and, and lifted the rope up and brought David in his wheelchair um, underneath the ropes and just pushed him up the up the fairway and the crowd started going crazy and um, clapping for him and he had the biggest smile on his face and he was holding his hand up and waving and then uh, we sat there on the side of the green and, and uh, Hunter rolled in about a, a, an 18 footer to finish the round and shoot 61 and um, came over and gave David a big hug and gave him the ball and um, it, it was just a, a really special moment and he's a really really special person. Yeah, not only did you have to carry Hunter's luggage up there, but you pushed David up there as well, and it's a little bit uphill, but it, I bet you had so much adrenaline you probably could have sprinted up that fairway. Uh, you're exactly right, and and regardless of David, you know whenever you, anybody asks how much the bag weighs, I say it depends on how many birdies my guy's making. He was making a bunch that day, so it was uh, I didn't even feel the bag. That's going to do it for the back nine, but we're going to wrap up this John Wood interview at the beginning of the 19th hole. So don't go anywhere. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Many of us have experienced back pain that interrupts our daily life and our activities. Having been a patient at SSM Health Physical Therapy and seeing the one-on-one care, I highly recommend them. Their experienced staff using the latest technique returns patients back to the things they enjoy, whether it's on the golf course, planting flowers, or working in the garden. Let my friends at SSM Health Physical Therapy get you out of pain and back into your life. There's 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. Are you looking for a great career? Do you like meeting nice people, working with your hands, and fixing things inside the home? Marcon Appliance Parts Company would like to encourage you to consider a high-paying career in major appliances repair and service. Major appliance service technicians are in very high demand. Major appliance techs work regular hours and make excellent money. They work local, in their own communities, and are home every night. It is an incredibly stable industry and highly rewarding work. Discover more about your new career in major appliance services today by contacting a local appliance service company in your hometown. In Kansas City, contact Nick Turner at Consumer Service Company. The phone number is 913-541-0438. Marcona Appliance Parts Company is based in St. Louis, Missouri and is the largest distributor of major appliance parts in North America and proud distributor of General Electric Parts. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Whitmore Country Club for sponsoring my show, Golf with Jay Delsing. When you join out at Whitmore, there's 90 holes of golf. You get access to the Missouri Bluffs, the Links of Dardine, and the Golf Club of Wentzville. And the cart fees are already included in your membership. There's no food and beverage minimums. There's no assessments. They have a 24-hour fitness center, large pool complex, tennis. Man, they've just got great family-oriented stuff. And if you get over there, you got to go in the golf shop, and you have to say hello to my friend Bummer. 
Bummer is just a delightful guy that would love to help you and your family with your golf game. He and his staff out there run golf leagues, skins games, members tournaments. Couples events are available all year long. If your family is looking for a place where you can hang out, have fun, enjoy good food, golf, sports, just a family-friendly atmosphere, you got to go to Whitmore Country Club. You can reach them at 636 636- Nine two six nine six two two. Professional golf returns to St. Louis in 2021. The Ascension Charity Classic, presented by Emerson. Stars like Phil Mickelson, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, and more compete at Norwood Hills Country Club, September 6th through the 12th. Tickets, clubhouse passes, hospitality suites, and pro-am foursomes are on sale now. All proceeds go to North St. Louis County Charities. Visit ascensioncharityclassic.com or call 314-938-2828. PGA Tour Golf is back in the loo. The Ascension Charity Classic. When things come out of left field, having a game plan makes all the difference. Luckily, Farmers Insurance has been helping people cover their bases for more than 90 years, and they can help you too. Talk to Farmers Agent Ed Fogelbach today to see if you have the coverage you want for whatever curveballs may come your way. Call 314-398-0101. That's Ed Fogelbach at 314 398 Zero one zero one. Hey, this is Jay Delsing. If you're in the market for a new vehicle, you've got to call my buddy Colin Burnt over at the Dean Team of Kirkwood. 314-966-0303. I have a 16-year-old daughter. We bought her a car last year, and these guys have taken great care of us. We bought a used Volkswagen. We just added service last week, and things are going great. If you need any kind of vehicle, call Colin at 314-966-0303. And I just got a text from Colin that said if you mention the Golf with Jay Delsing show, he'll take an additional $500 off of any purchase. Grab your friends, a cold one, and pull up a chair. We're on to the 19th hole on golf with Jay Delsing. The 19th hole is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. Hey, thanks for hanging around with us. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay, and Pearly is with me. We are headed to the 19th hole that is brought to you by Mick Ultra. Hmm, again, couldn't have a better sponsor for the 19th hole than Mick Ultra. Um, we are going straight to the conclusion of the John Wood interview. I hope you enjoy it. Maybe. Yes, sir! One of the greatest displays of courageous golf that anybody has ever seen any place. Do you have a favorite golf course on tour? And tell the folks, in your opinion, because you've traveled the world now, Olympics, Ryder Cups, you've you've gone to the top courses in so many different countries. What makes a course great for you? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I, I I like courses where you have to you have choices, um, and you have to make those choices. You just said it. I think. 90% of the times these guys hit a bad shot, it's because of indecision. You are not sure what, if this is the right shot, if it's the right club, what's the wind doing. But um, I think you look at a course, well, I love cut, caddying Augusta for many reasons. But even if it wasn't, you know, my favorite term in the world, we were just caddying on that course in a week that it's got firm greens and some wind whipping around. Um, there is just, it's a, such a fine point between a good shot and a bad shot. You know, um, if you're going for 15 and two, let's say, and you're not a hundred percent sure of the wind, but you think it's doing this and you're hoping it doesn't switch a little bit. You're out there, you know, trying to hit a hybrid or a five iron or four iron. And you, you basically got, you know, three or four yards to land it in. That's it. It's not like, um, a, a regular tour course week in week out when there's some softness to it. And, you know, if you land something 30 feet, it's going to end up 30 feet or 20 feet or 40 feet. But places like Augusta or, you know, most open championship courses, um, it's such a fine line between the right shot and the wrong shot. Um, that, that's what I, I love. Riviera this week is a great example of that. It's a course that's held up so well to technology. They haven't tweaked it much over the years, but it's, it's so hard to get balls close to the hole there um, for some reason. And um, 
I, I love places. I, I love open championships because like I said, there are so many choices and um, players and caddies <clears throat> and the, you're thinking so far ahead because of the wind and the firmness and the bounces you get. Yeah. If you land it five yards short of the green, it's going to bounce left. But if I land it 10 yards short of the green, it's going to bounce right, bounce right. So that kind of complication and, and um, so many things going on with the shot is, was what I love most about caddying and about courses. Um, you know, when you get a week where it's, it's pretty soft and there's not a lot of wind, I don't care how long the course is guys are going to tear it apart, period. So uh, I love I love courses with a lot of strategy. Um, I like wind. I like uh, firm greens and firm fairways, and and flyer lies out of the rough. And and when you really got to, you know, it really separates the best players those weeks. I think from uh, from guys who maybe not be playing so well. So um, Riviera is one of my favorites. I love Augusta. Um, Port Rush blew me away. Um, Carnoustie I love. Um, so th- those are some of my favorites on tour, but I also like, you know, some old school ones like colonial and Hilton head, which you look at the scorecard and you go, there's no reason these guys shouldn't shoot 30 under, but every year nobody does because the wind and the strategy and the firmness. So, um, I think, uh, those are some of my favorites. Yeah, those, th- that is terrific. So, so John, you make this transition from Caddy and you're going out to work for NBC. You've just done a great job. People can hear in this interview how well-spoken you are. You're thoughtful. And, and the insights that you can bring to these specific shots or circumstances, is, it's got to be fun for you. It's a lot of fun. I, I tell you, you know, you, you go, with your Caddy career, as you know, um, week in, week out, you're preparing for one guy and one style of golf. You kind of, you're walking the course and think, okay, Cooch is going to want to hit three wood here. He's going to want to hit driver here. But now um, I have to kind of redo all my homework and, and know how every kind of player is going to play the holes. Um, so you've got guys like, like Bryson and Cameron Champ and Brooks Kepka and Dustin who can, you know, carry at 330 and you still got guys like Zach Johnson and, and uh and coach who who you know who hit it 280 290 um and it's fun to figure out wind directions and and how every kind every style of player will play these courses um it's it's fun figuring all that out and um uh it, it's kind of some somebody asked me the other day about how how it feels talking on the air and and describing the shots and describing the decision making and and honestly um it's something that like bones and i have done for 25 years it's just always been one person now you're kind of explaining the shots that you feel are the right shots um um and decision making the the things that go in the decisions um to everybody so we're used to um we're used to talking about the shots and the decision making in the process um now it's just on a, on a much bigger scale yeah, uh, and j- just continue to be yourself, be authentic, and I love that, uh, the energy and the passion that you have. So uh, the last couple things, John, just to kind of round out your the the guy that you are. I know you're a gigantic music lover. You're a huge sports lover. You and I have so much in common. Our first love <laughs> in our whole life was baseball, and it's the same way for me. But you mentioned something on the road that is so funny that you mentioned Michael's Takiri over in Pacific Grove, and I didn't think anybody else had known about that joint before. Oh, my God, Jay. I, 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 unfortunately, I didn't go to the AT&T this year, but, uh, you know, I've never missed it in, in 23 years of caddy, and, and I swear four times out of the six nights I was there every year, I was at Michael's Taqueria, you know, getting takeout. Or, uh, it's just it is the best little tiny hole in the wall uh, Mexican food and uh, man, I, I I wore that place out. I must have eaten hundreds of meals there over the years. Love Michael's Taqueria. It's one of the, it's <laughs> That's one, funny that you knew it too. It's one of the fun things, you know, John, about when you go to. Not only do you look forward to golf courses, maybe you have a favorite place to stay, but every once in a while, you know, you'll find a place like Michael's and you'll go, oh damn, you know, now I know where I'm going to be eating. You know, half of my meals. So true. <laughs> 
it's so true. <laughs> Finding those little hole in the wall places, and you know, when you play the pro ams, asking the the volunteers or or the kids holding the sign, hey, what's the best so and so restaurant around here? Where do you go for this? And and uh, I, I always love finding the local spots you know because you can eat uh you know chain restaurants anywhere so it, it's a blast going to a new city uh and find uh, the local haunts so john tell our listeners how they can follow you tell them now you've actually written some music you've actually you, you play more than you, you you're learning the drums i think i know you play the guitar tell tell the folks how they can listen to some of your stuff they can follow you on social if they like or just uh become a fan Okay. Uh, well, I, I, I've got a bunch of songs that I've written on uh, and just recorded myself in my own little uh, little side room here with my computer and a microphone. But uh, I've got a bunch of songs up on SoundCloud and just type in John Wood and and uh, those are there. Um, uh, Twitter handle is John Wood, but uh, spelled W O U L D. Um, and those are that's kind of yeah. I'm not, I don't have a Facebook. I do have Instagram. Same thing. John Wood W O U L D. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, the songs are on SoundCloud and, and those are my social media handles. Buddy, thank you so much for jumping on with me. It was a pleasure. Anytime, Jay. Okay. So John, so much content. I, you talked about the Ryder Cups, talked about the President's Cup, but one of the things that's, that strikes me is, um, so many different personalities, you know, and as a caddy, you've got to, you know, you've got to know when to say something, when not to. That is not easy. That is that is a learned habit, well, isn't Especially it? with the cast of characters he had. It's not, it's, not like, it's not like he had the same type of personalities uh, that he was told in the background. Is there anybody more different than Kevin Sutherland and Kelk? No. I mean, I mean that, Mark that's, Kalkovecki that's, is a great guy, but he... Is he plays so fast? He, you know his information that he wants is is sporadic, and um, yeah. And Kevin Sutherland is much more of a. I'm going to take a whole lot of time. I'm going to plod my way around, and a hell of a player. I yep, mean, he, for sure, he's he's doing just great. But um, um, man, the um, the stuff that John's doing now, what he's bringing to NBC, is just fantastic. He and Bones really, really add a lot to that telecast. He he's. John Wood is smooth. He knows his stuff, confident, and boy, does he love what he's doing. Yeah, he really does, and he's a baseball junkie. He loves music. He, he uh, gave us some some spots where we can listen to some of his music. And um, For a guy that didn't know that he wanted to do this, didn't plan to do it, was doing it, and still didn't plan to do it, he ended up in a pretty dang good spot. So much for setting goals and uh, planning out your life. <laughs> <laughs> right. And to his credit, he's got this personality. I don't know. Have you ever had a chance to meet him? No, you know him? no, I, I do not know. He's got this personality that is just, it just sets off calmness, yeah. you know. It's just kind of one of these guys you can tell is not going to get rattled and uh, he's going to be strong under fire. And, one and, of my, and, my favorite lines with him is he says, you know, the only thing a caddy can do to a 62 is turning it into a 67. Yeah, <laughs> that is such a great line. When your guy's going, get out of the way and keep a peripheral feel for the golf course to keep everybody else out of the way, right? Officials, fans, you do a phenomenal other players. job. Oh, absolutely. When, when I've been, when, I mean, you couldn't get Secret Service in to, t- <laughs> to touch just when when my rounds are, are, were going well. It's uh, it was it was like in a bubble. It's a special sort of time, and, yeah. and, and, you, and you have to protect that because you don't know when it's coming. And even the best players, it doesn't happen that often. Right, right. So, um, it's it, one of the things I wanted, and in, in that I think it's so kind of enlightening about this interview is. The caddies don't get interviewed that much, you know, and so I'm pushing out and reaching out to to try to open some of those doors because, th- th- well, they have the best stories. For sure they have the best, and he has such a great attitude. You can tell he really wanted to do this. This guy's just loving all aspects. When a guy loves in between the rounds the oh, way he does, I, I, I'll sit there going, I, know. I hate it in between. I know. I'll hang out with you, that kind of stuff. But as a player, yep. I hated the in between. Yep. Sometimes with, as, as a caddy. But he that guy loves every aspect of it. You can just tell the way he's talking about it, yep. which is a huge deal. I got to tell you this funny story. <clears throat> uh, we won't name the players because I promised him he wouldn't, but he was a top, top player. And they're on the first tee, and he happens to be playing the same type of ball as um, as uh, who John was caddying for at the time. I think it was it was either Cooch or Calc. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So John goes over to this top player's caddy and says, hey, man, you know, we're playing this ball. What number 
and here we got a, a two. What number are you playing? And he says, you know, because this case had a tough stretch. And he said, well, we're going to start off with the, <laughs> with the threes, but our provisionals are going to be fours. Oh, boy, I've never heard that before. Oh, my gosh. I, oh, my gosh. It was so good. But, um, you know, that's going to do it for another show. That's going to wrap up the uh, 19th hole. Um, but one of, your, one of your best interviews, Jay. Really enjoyed that. I hope everybody else did, too. Yeah, thanks, Pearl. So come back next week. We're going to have Billy Andre on the show and another episode of Whack and Chase. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hit him straight, St. Louis.